Fascinating Fact Friday. A couple weeks ago, I was watching a video about the Octothorpe. You might know it better as the hash sign, pound symbol, or number sign. The video gave a history of this symbol from meaningless obscurity up to its ubiquitous use today. And one of the things I found really interesting in the video was that when they were developing the numerical keypad for touch-tone telephones, they wanted to leave some options open for being able to communicate with computers through the phones. And so they added in the star symbol and the pound sign to give themselves some additional non-numerical dialing options. Well, that got me thinking why do we have the keypad layout for touch-tone phones that we have today? So I did a little bit of research. For those of you that might not know that there was a type of dialing before touch-tone, let me give you a little bit of history. Originally, there was rotary dialing, which was a round dial on the front of the phone, and the phone line connected to a switchboard and the phone connected to that switchboard through a series of electrical pulses and this was known as pulse dialing and the pulses corresponded with the number that was dialed by putting by moving the hole for that number all the way to the little bracket piece originally rotary phones didn't even have the holes corresponding to the numbers they just had lugs on a finger plate. Touch tone dialing came along and was introduced at the World's Fair in 1962. And this was seen as a better way to communicate with computers. That's been the, that had been the goal for quite a while. And it replaced the electrical pulses with sound. Uh, and it got, it was immediately po very popular and eventually completely replaced rotary dialing to the point where many si computer systems in the US would, would not recognize a rotary phone. So when, they were, when Bell Company was developing their touch tone technology, uh, they had to come up with a, a keypad. And they apparently did quite a bit of research and human trials and had people trying out different layouts and uh, these different they recorded how quickly people could dial as well as how accurately people could dial with all of the different layouts so while we may not be entirely sure why we ended up with the format that we have now there are a couple theories that seem to be well supported by the evidence one theory is that the number one on the rotary dial was in the top right hand corner and so to keep as close to the rotary style as possible they wanted to have the one at the top but since we read left to right it made sense to move the one over to the left hand side another theory is that since letters had already been assigned to the numbers that it made more sense to have the alphabet go from the top left across down to the bottom. The one, two, and three across the bottom and work their way up like a calculator keypad, then the alphabet would be completely out of order. Interestingly, a lot of the technology that was developed after the touchtone keypad has that layout, the same layout as, as a phone, uh, technology like ATMs. Whereas technology that was concurrent with cash registers have the same layout as a cash register or calculator like a 10 key adding machine or the 10 key keypad on a computer keyboard. Well, that's it for Fascinating Fact Friday. Tune in tomorrow for a Sock Puppet Saturday. Bye!